If you are like us and have an older van, you probably find that chasing rust and worn out paint around it is never ending. Well, we found a way to solve those minor paint repairs much simpler, quicker and with a better finish. So keep watching. Don't forget to check out our other videos on everything camper van and motorhome related from solar to water, heating to gadgets, tyres to trips. If you like this video please do hit the thumbs up, it really does help me to know what you like and you can ask any questions or give feedback in the comments. If you want to make sure you don't miss any of our future videos please hit the subscribe button and clicking the bell will give you a notification when a new video goes live. Finally, if you do decide to hit the thumbs down, it would be great if you could also leave a comment so I'd know what you didn't like. Paint repairs, whether it's from age, rust or damage, are a bit of a necessary evil, especially if you own an older van. In the past, we've gone through the rigmarole of loads of masking up and rattle can preparation before spraying a large area and usually ending up with that orange peel finish. After seeing them used on TV, we tried out an airbrush as a better way to repaint small areas with better control over the amount of paint sprayed and the area covered. Our first choice was the simplest and cheapest setup, a budget modelling single action airbrush and an aerosol can of propellant, which worked okay for us, but did have some drawbacks which we'll talk about soon. So we then progressed to a dual action gravity fed airbrush and compressor. Setup of the simplest option costing around £10 for the airbrush and £10 for the propellant was simple. Just connect up the aerosol to the brush and obviously you have a finite amount of air and we found it did lose pressure as the can got cold so you then had to wait for it to warm up which did become quite frustrating. The airbrush is very simple to use, just by pressing the button it allows the air to flow. The paint is sucked up into the airbrush as the air passes over the nozzle and you can alter the amount of paint that comes out by adjusting the nozzle. But you can't do that while you're actually painting. And as the only way to start and stop painting is to start and stop the air, you also don't get the most consistent of sprays. But it's still better than a rattle can in our experience. We're using quite thin water-based paint in this demo, so you can see the volume of spray coming out easier, and it's easier to clean the airbrush after. When using the correct viscosity of paint, the coverage is better. The advantage of a compressor over the can of propellant is that you effectively have an unlimited amount of air. This compressor can run on 12 volts, but also has a lithium battery, allowing it to run wirelessly for around 90 minutes. It has three pressure settings. The dual action airbrush is gravity fed, so you just fill the hopper with paint. The advantage of the dual action is that a push on the button starts the air, but not the paint, and then pulling back on the button allows the paint to flow. This gives you the ability to control the amount of paint coming out as you paint, and allows you to shut off the paint flow without shutting off the air, reducing splatter. As most will know, preparation is key when it comes to painting. I'm not going to go into detail on this as there are loads of great YouTube videos about it. What I will share is that when it comes to rush treatment, we've tried a few and by far the best for us has been fur tan. In true Blue Peter style, we're going to paint an area that we prepared and rust treated previously around the front windscreen. We've got colour matched paint for our van and it's thin to roughly the consistency of milk. So after filling the airbrush and testing it's working, we can make a start. As you can see, because of the control we have over the paint, we only have to put a small amount of masking in place to protect the windscreen. Much easier than what's necessary with a rattle can, and whilst we could use a brush, we found that hard to get a nice thin layer and a good finish. 
As you can see we can very carefully build up the paint in the areas we need and as the coats are so thin they dry quickly, meaning you can get multiple coats and a good finish more easily. Here is a quick before and after from above the windscreen and the completed A pillar. A final thing to factor in with the use of an airbrush is the cleaning. Again there are loads of great videos on YouTube for this so I'm not going to go into detail but an airbrush cleaning pot and some good quality gun wash makes it very easy. I do hope that's been useful for some of you and whether you go for the budget items that work okay but can be a little bit frustrating or splash out on the more expensive kit, we think the results are worth it for both as keeping up with paint repairs are now a lot less stressful. Thanks for watching our video and as always if you have any questions or feedback please pop them in the comments below. If you find the video useful please like, share and consider subscribing.